Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to do some 2D kit bashing in this video, but we're going to start with 3D. So if you're new to the idea of kit bashing, you'll get a better understanding of how it works in 3D, and then you'll see how this translates over into 2D a lot better. And this is something that I think most professional artists utilize at this point, right? And it's something you definitely need to learn how to do. But uh, in 3D, it might start with something real simple, like you uh, get like the kit ops add-on for Blender, or you buy a, um, a kit bash, or whatever the case may be. And you can start with those kit bash pieces and create really complex stuff real quick. So if I have like a cube here and I'm using the uh, Master Omega pack or whatever for kit ops, and you can see here that um, there's different things like there's different objects or the shapes or whatever the case, right? Uh, but if I was to load up like this text section, you know, these kinds of pieces here. So if I had something really lame, like a, a wall that I wanted to work on and uh, lame. Yeah, but a wall, anyways, you get the idea. I can add an insert, bam, I can kit bash, right? Okay, and so maybe now my wall will look something, well, let's grab the right thing, here we go. Maybe it'll look something like this, right? And maybe we can add some more stuff to it. Let's just add uh, this little cylindrical piece. Let's do that again. Scale it in, we can move it around. All right, so maybe this is over here. Right, you get the idea. Kit bashing is extremely fast and it's efficient. Uh, maybe there's a couple big vents over here for some reason. And um, they do this number. Okay, so you can make complex things really quickly with this technique, right? Obviously. And it's, it's almost like you didn't do any work at all. Now, here's the thing about this. If you're used to programming, there's high level and then there's low level, right? Um, these pieces, you can consider them something like low level, right? It's already been done, a lot of little nitty gritty stuff like screws and bolts and the cut into the surface. That's the low level stuff. And this is going to help you generate high level stuff a lot quicker because all that low level stuff's already been taken care of. That's how you're going to do 3D models like that. Well, it happens in 2D too. And you can create something that's a little bit more complex a lot easier than you think. So we're actually going to get started on a new one here. And we're going to go to, uh, we're doing this in Krita, but you could use Photoshop or whatever. Uh, design template A3 uh, for Krita. And uh, so we got a couple layers here and we got an empty layer. Okay, so I'm going to use the pencil uh, just to get started. And I'm going to use the line tool. Okay, and the line tool, you can see I can draw like this, right? Just holding shift, I can snap it out in these areas. And I'm using a tablet to sketch too, by the way, just so you know. Uh, but like, say we wanted to lay out a wall panel, we're trying to figure out what we want to do here. Right. We're just designing a wall panel at this point. This is as simple as it gets, right? Okay. Maybe there's a, another little section right over here. And then in, in this area, maybe there's um, a little panel inside of here or something. Right? So you have to uh, click and then hold shift afterwards. Okay. All right. So maybe maybe we got something like that going on. That's our wall panel. Cool. Let's color this thing real quick. We're gonna do it kind of cheap like here. We're gonna do it on um, the same layer. We're gonna use this little, I'm gonna use a brush tool. Uh, we're gonna use lower opacity, like 10%, 15, something in there. You can go 20 maybe if you wanted to. Now, all I'm gonna do is color this thing real quick. And I'm using transparency here, but um, ultimately you could do this like full shaded if you wanted to but you probably want to keep it simple shaded like in the sense that it's going to be uh, like it's generic lighting like it's overcast there's not real harsh shadows anywhere because you probably will want to add those later if you're going to do that um, but you can certainly lay in some like ambient occlusion looking stuff or whatever the case and have a little bit of fun with it like this right I'm just gonna color this like this for now, okay? And this panel here, maybe I just slightly color it down here. Slightly color it here, oh, and stay on the line. Okay, apparently I'm not hitting that angle very well. Okay, and we'll do this one as well. And this one. So it's a little bit more interesting anyways. And I'm going to go over this whole thing with a much bigger brush. I'm going to line it up so that it's squared with it. I'm holding sh um, shift and space bar to rotate, by the way. I just want to recolor the whole thing uh, kind of lightly all the way through. 
So those will get a little bit darker and the whole thing will turn gray basically. We're not getting crazy advanced here with this, but this is what we're doing. Okay. I'm not picking the pin up. I'm using a pin, by the way. If you don't have a drawing tablet, get one. And then maybe this area is a little bit darker as well. Why not? I wasn't sure if I was going to do this, but you can do whatever you want, basically. So a lot of the best 3D and 2D artists, they, they keep this kind of stuff in mind. They start with some really basic line art. They might shade it. Um, they might do a silhouette drawing where they go back and they sketch over it and then they shade that. Um, and then, But you can use these as components to kit bash with. So we'll go to a new layer and uh, we're going to go over sketching now. So we did the, uh, just like a basic idea of a panel using a line tool, making it 2D, completely flat, orthographic drawing that's no perspective. Now you could draw in perspective if you want, but everything's going to have to be in perspective. Just remember like two point perspective. Uh, if you draw like a little X, your lines converge, right? Do vi little vanishing points on a horizon line usually. But if they don't ever converge, you draw the little X and you keep them perfectly at like, I think it's 30 or 30 degrees or 60 degrees or whatever. Um, and they're all perfectly parallel with each other where they never converge. That's an isometric draw and there's no perspective, okay? Uh, if you do that, it works really good with kit bashing, right? So, or... I'm calling it kit bashing, but it's just little drawing tricks, I guess, if you want to call it whatever. Uh, that's fine. But uh, so if you keep that in mind and you keep all your lines perfectly kind of in the same order here, it might be a little bit hard to do. You might want to use a grid, an isometric grid to keep your lines as straight as possible. Um, but you can sketch out like 3D shapes like really fast like this, right? And it's not really that hard. It's a lot of fun. That one's converging a little too much. Let's try to fix that. Okay. And so you can come up with some pretty cool stuff rather quickly. That's all I'm getting at here. And then you can do this number, right? And then just move on from it. If you want more organic stuff, you can certainly do like um, organic kind of shapes. Like here's like a cross section. And so if this was a shape that came out to this thickness, you see, we would do it on the other side as well, the back side. And you should leave the wireframe kind of drawing like the little guiding lines because it's going to help you in the future potentially because you could potentially use this and when you're doing isometric anyways you could use it as a forward facing or a backwards facing uh, piece and um, you can use both sides of this believe it or not so anyways you can see how this is starting to go now we're starting to get like this little shape going a little hard to follow on that one perhaps but you could do all kinds of things really if you uh, you know you sketch out some lines real quick Make some little vertical sections, maybe make a cylinder, right? And then maybe make a, another cylinder up here. Remember, this is ISO, so we can just draw perfectly shaped cylinders. Have these line up with each other. This is our low-level stuff. That's what we're doing. Same as designing those nuts of those bolts as the 3D object there. And... um we can combine all this stuff together later because this might be like a desk or something like that, right? And we can certainly go through this and we can shade this as well. Um, so for these, I'm going to keep it real simple, but like, you know, this is the left side here. This is the left side. So we'll shade those. Okay. This is the left side and this is the left side. So we'll shade that. Uh, that would have probably shading at the bottom, just so you know, but... I'm going to shade a little darker, shade a little darker underneath it, right? So you see where that's going? Maybe a little, maybe you can get away with a little shading there. Anyways, um, same process over here, except this one, I'm going to try to follow the curvature that I want. I think that works out usually a little bit better. And then right at the bottom, I'll put a little darker section there. And if you really wanted to, you can go like with super light grays and kind of go over the tops as well. Um, or you could turn that opacity down perhaps. Um, and then you can start to like blend things a little bit, kind of solid shade them out a little bit. Not, not really a big deal. Sometimes you can do that, that's fun. Specifically on these pure white backgrounds, it works out quite well. And so we have all these different little things going on now. Nothing looks real complicated or intricate, but watch what happens here. Uh, we have a couple different things we can play with now. And so 
this is where it gets fun. We're going to put these down here just so they're out of the way. Um, and I know what I'm doing here. Uh, matter of fact, I'm going to collapse these two so they're the same layer. So select them both, Control E, collapse them, because we're going to create a lot of layers here in a second. And I'm going to start with this shape, believe it or not, because it has a little bit of uh, kind of, uh, well, it's isometric, but it, it's got a little shape to it. We'll put it that way. So uh, Control C, Control V, we get a new layer. Press T, we can press that and move it out. Control T, we can actually make it bigger. If we hold Shift, we can snap it into position or keep it from changing uh, aspect there. And now we can go ahead and press like enter. Okay, cool. Let's go back to that layer. See this wall? There's different ways you do this in different programs, but you can control C, control V it, press T, move it out. And you'll see because I was using transparency, um, nothing is, is solid basically. Sometimes it's nice to have it all solid so that one lays on top of the other. Um, and then you can order them with the layers, but you can do that this way as well and then go back over it and just kind of um, at the very top level here with a new layer and just uh, reshade things a little bit. So it just depends on how you want to work. But um, this wall doesn't match that, right? Um, so you can press Control T here in Krita um, and you can use a perspective tool and you can play around with this and do things like that, right? if you wanted to. That's just one way you can work with it. Um, but also, you can also hold Control. So Control T, uh, maybe that's not working. Press, let's see if we can get it to work now. Control T and hold Control, there we go. You can do things like this, right? And you can see it's not gonna be isometric, it's actually kind of turning it into perspective, which is not exactly what we want. So maybe that perspective tool will work out better, who knows? Uh, but there's just cool little things like that you can do. And we can go ahead and skew this around for sure and line it up to the back side of this. So this might be like a wall in a um, classroom or sci-fi area, whatever the case. Maybe it's a window. Who knows? Uh, I'm going to press. We're trying to line up so that they're both isometric. Press Enter. Control T again real quick. I'm going to um, grab this handle, oh, let's change it, right click, change it back to free. Uh, grab the handle, hold shift, and we'll make it bigger. Okay, so it should start to make sense here, right? We did that. Let's copy this whole section here. Uh, be, well, let's just duplicate it. Select the layer, hit Control J. It should duplicate it. Now we could just move that one out, press T. Uh, you can see it doesn't quite line up the way we thought it would have, but... um. Control T, hold shift, drag it out. And so we can have it overlapping like that. We might rotate it a bit or something. I don't know. You want to try to keep it straight with a, an isometric grid. Per, uh, probably. Let's take a wild guess there. That, that's what you'll want to do. So this one, if it's separated, wherever it is, there it is. Okay. Uh, we could put it like almost right against the wall. You can see it actually sets away from the wall a little bit. It's kind of interesting. I don't really care for it that much. Uh, there is one downside to this though, is that you like maybe we want it to be mirrored over here. We can't really do that. Like we can't just mirror it the other way. Uh, but we could use it in a manner. I was going to try to do it anyway. So let's press Control J, uh, where we like line them up end to end like this, right? Um, or we can even push this behind it. Uh, something like this perhaps and make it maybe like twice as thick or something like that and then so if you were to do something like this anyways use your eraser just go in there use a brush change it to eraser um, and then anywhere they might overlap where you don't want them to you can just erase those areas real quick and that'll kind of fix some of those little bit of issues with the uh the alignment of the two pieces, right? And so now you can see it just doesn't look quite right like that, but yeah, it's okay. And so I want to take this real quick. I'm going to use the marker, use pure white, and I'm just going to re-highlight here so it kind of gets rid of the background a little bit. So if it was solid shaded, you could see it would be a lot nicer in some respects, but uh, since we don't have that right now, we'll just have to work with it as it is and color this gray. Maybe a couple times. The solid shading would be a really good thing in a lot of respects, at least for this particular scene. Sometimes I like to uh, do really loose shapes that just are very thumbnail-esque. 
type shapes and then um, let the lines lay on top of each other like this or the transparency then just trace out kind of what I like and what I don't like and that usually works out well I'm gonna go to a lighter gray and do the front side here okay and so we'll do that loose stuff here at the very end but I think you're getting the idea here we can force a desk into this scene now right like you can see it's starting to come together and that's great because you know there might be uh, some kind of science project on it or something so we select this area go to the right layer copy it paste it and then maybe this thing has like some kind of weird science project on it maybe it's on the top here okay you see what i'm saying it's it's more or less kit bashing at this point is what it is and on top of that little shapes like this this is more organic in nature grab it copy it paste it let's pull it up to the top T, move it control t we're going to rotate this one and so we could try doing things like setting something like this up uh, perfectly straight up and down maybe this is some kind of weird uh, little thing here and you know maybe you like it maybe you don't like it the way it is that's cool you, you always you're in an art program you can sketch and draw on this thing right so maybe we want to change it so that it looks a little bit different maybe it wraps around here does something like that you can see, I'm just going with the shading right off the bat, not even really drawing or anything. Um, maybe we'll just do this very lightly. It goes all the way around, comes around like right here. Uh, but more importantly, I think this one down towards the floor is having the most issues, right? So take it down and um, square it out a little bit, maybe, or round it out. Uh, you can see, I probably want to do this a little bit more thoughtfully, though. this all the way through a little bit came out right there and so now you can start rendering on these as much as you want right when you're doing you're doing artwork it's still called rendering but you're manually rendering as opposed to using a computer with cycles or whatever you know what i'm saying uh, so you do color samples you can cover things up you start to blend them all kinds of stuff just happens right here at this point. So it's a lot easier to deal with this, in my opinion, than it is to try and um, reinvent the wheel sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Like you can draw those little granular pe pieces and then you can just do uh, that low level stuff and just start heading up to the higher level, higher end stuff anyways. And so this works out usually really well. And you'll, you'll like doing it too, trust me, because it delivers results a lot faster sometimes. And all you got to do is just go through the process of, you know, tweaking it and making it look nicer. Combo this up with 3D, right? You can make these kinds of shapes and render them out in 3D. And now you'll start building a whole collection. And remember, your 3D shapes could just be um, basic solid shapes. You can add textures to them in the 2D program, right? But, like, maybe we go really small with this now and we add a little shading here in this area or something. You know what I'm saying? Shading here perhaps. Add a little shadow down here like ambient occlusion. Okay. And then of course all the background elements would like you'd have to add in floor shadows and stuff too, right? That's just gonna that's gonna come later. More than likely. I mean, you might do it sooner than later, but you're going to do it at some point. So, like, it might be a little darker back here, but not too much darker. All right. You get the idea with that thing, right? Um, and you can always sketch on top of this. You can do more lines again later on if you really wanted to. Um, but, like, you can just use a pencil and, you know, figure out exactly what you want and go through and kind of reconfigure the shapes a little bit whatever the case so there you go all right i said we were going to do the more organic free floaties type stuff here so watch this same idea isometric sketch do some weird half section because you might not go all the way across but if you wanted to you can always finish it out right um, so might do something like this 
you know, very sketchy kind of thing, right? But do a couple of these like little thumbnails basically and have some fun with it, right? There's nothing that says you can't just do these little sketches like this, especially for like alien stuff. It's really fun. But you do have to learn how to draw a little bit, at least make the basic primitive shapes you want. Uh, do those little cross sections so you can do like little circles, little cylinders, all that fun stuff. And what you'll see happen here real quick, like, is none of this is really that, that crazy, but it's it just starts to work, right? It just starts to all work together. Okay. And so here we go. We'll call that one there. I don't even know what it is. But we're going to shade it real quick. Okay. I'm going to do this with a light gray. We're going to go over it real quick. Just going to solid it out like that for now. All of that out. Well, I mean, it's not completely solid. It's still transparent, but broken up from that white background, right? A little bit. Use like a mid gray. Okay. I'm just going to go in and tap mid gray in in a couple areas very really lightly. I'm not trying to overdo it here, guys. So now we can do that. Do a dark gray real quick. And we'll just tap that in at the very bottom here just a little bit. On this one, maybe we want some dark gray under here. I don't know what's going on with it, but it may be something like that, right? Not that dark. Okay. Fun, right? Like these can't tell what these things are, let's be honest. So um, that's the fun part about it, though, is it's about shape exploration, study, and all that fun stuff. So let me turn off. Oh, I think I'm on that same layer. Okay, let me copy all this real quick. Control C, Control V. We're going to turn everything else off. I'm selecting it all, holding Shift, hitting Control G, groups it, put it all down. There, boom. All right, so we only have these shapes left now. We're working on this layer. Uh, so let's pick a main shape here. Let's do this one. I'm going to copy it, paste it, press T, move it, Control T, scale it up. Hold shift, bam. There we go. Now we have a bigger section here, right? This is something I get a lot of enjoyment out of. Hopefully you guys do too. So um can select this one. Go back to that layer. Control C, Control V, Control T. You see where this is going? And now we can start to um, do this number. Now we could lay them out in this manner. Um, but we could also, you know, change the scale, change the size. We can rotate, we can mirror, we can do all kinds of stuff if we really wanted to and just see what we end up with. Um, I mean, there's not, there's no limits here, technically. Like you can see, as long as it looks about right, these organic ones work out really well. So more organic-like anyways. And I don't even know what this thing is. We'll see if we can use it. Uh, but uh, we can do this number now. Maybe this just comes out to the side, something like that. If we wanted the inverse of this for the other side, like it's a wing, we'd have to draw it, unfortunately. So sometimes it helps to actually draw these both at the same time. But here's a little trick about that as well. Um, remember how we did the wall? The wall is the same process for things like wings. Um, let's do a new layer for this real quick. Um, so if I did like a wing section and I sketched it out and it was, um, let's do more like a delta wing thing, right? Let's say I did some kind of wing like this and we did it flat, just like the wall. Okay. Same process. We color it real quick. Kind of keep this real loose, but you get the idea. Dude, don't be so crazy with it like this. But uh, let's say we did do that. Uh, we can copy that, paste it. Uh, we can, could have used symmetry, but we could just copy it at the end of it. And um, control T, right click, and we can mirror horizontal. You see, oh, there we go. Think about the spacing between this thing. Like how how far do you want these wings to space? Uh, we're gonna do something like that, okay? Now we take those two, control E, collapse them down so they're one, control T. You get where this is going, right? Uh, so now we can just hit, hit this whole control. Well, maybe this one's a little unruly. Uh, we could try doing this number where we do this like this. This might be something you want to try. It may or may not work out for you, um, but usually that perspective tool works quite well. So we'll do that one here in this case. Uh, grab the middle 
pull it out that way, middle, pull it out that way. You can see we have this section over here now. And you can see where this is going, hopefully, by now. If we wanted wings on this thing, we could do that. Just like that. So that little section that we just used, if we had done that something like this to begin with, uh, we would have been a little bit better off, perhaps. Let's see if we can actually get a hold of it real quick. I don't know which one it's on. The one we had underneath. That one. So we'll press T and move it out real quick. Uh, but you can see where that went. And if we had done something like that, it would have worked out like that. Now, only thing is there's no depth to it, right? And so we can go through real quick. Let's use an eraser. We're going to knock out the area we don't want it to exist for the most part. Okay. And you can see there, maybe we want it to exist in this area. Okay. Uh, but we can certainly, I'm going to do a new layer. And you can certainly add depth to things like this. Like here, maybe we want uh, like a darker gray for just a second. Okay. And maybe we just want like a little thing that comes up right here. See where that's going? So we can do things like that still. We can add that over here as well. It's a lot easier to manage doing just a couple little things as opposed to doing that whole section. Uh, matter of fact, though, this is too dark of a gray, so I'm going to lighten it. And you see how those transparent lines, they start to add up? It gives you ideas on where you can head with these kinds of things, right? Like this front one I did twice. This back one I've already done twice. I'm going to do it one more time. Uh, maybe make it a little bit lighter and do it again. This one a little bit lighter as well. Oh, that's too much. Let's take it down a notch. Let's see if we can't. Work that out a little bit different. There you go. All right, so we are in progress now. I like to just play with the different shades of gray. I just like to just go through this and just use different shades now. And so maybe some things become a little bit darker. But you don't want to get too carried away. Use like those mid-tones more so than any of the others, perhaps. And you'll start to work these lines out, basically, at this point. They'll start to naturally just kind of disappear. Like here, for example. This maybe comes down like this. So this might be darker on this side, perhaps. You know what I'm saying? But it might be brighter up here. A little bit. Let's try it even brighter. Might be brighter right in this area. Then maybe a little brighter in here, maybe not so much. But you can see where it's going at least now. We're we're starting to work these things out. It's a lot of fun, right? Once you do this, you're going to be hooked. You're going to be addicted to it, and never want to draw another way probably, because it gets so much done so fast. It's like painting almost, like traditional painting of sorts. And there we go. I don't know what it is, but it's a thing. An alien thing, apparently. Okay. And do take time to just go over and sketch on top of it again as well. There's nothing wrong with that. i use a real light gray real quick. You know, make your brush smaller. And... Go easier on the tonal changes, the darks and the lights. Might start adding some detail to it at some point. Now you should be feeling pretty confident in the ability to be able to do things like this. So play around with this just a little bit, and it's like I said, it's gonna you're gonna get hooked on it, right? All right, let's see. So you can go back over it with a pencil, like I said, and sketch on top of it. Probably do it on a new layer, it wouldn't hurt. So that way, if you ever mess up, you can just erase the line and not the, uh, the shading, you know what I'm saying? Let's do another loose sketch on top and you can recolor it in after you do this perhaps, or, you know, iteratively design at this point, you know, work things back and forth 
really spend your time on this part and you can do a full rendering, a full illustration. Um, especially if you're bringing in those 3D shapes, right? Make some things in Blender, make them look good. Of course, you know, as you do more detail, you'll probably start zooming in and all that. So you'll have to like match the uh, the shapes here exactly how you want them and all that. But you get the idea at this point, like if you wanted like a little like wire sticking out here or something. I have no brush smoothing on, by the way. So you may want to turn on brush smoothing. I'm going to use Lazy Nozumi here. That's just going to give you a cleaner result, generally speaking. You could use the um, brush smoothing provided with Krita. It's under um, tool options. You just do uh, settings, dockers, and tool options uh, somewhere in here. Yeah, tool options. You get that little docker and you can set up um, average smoothing or lazy mouse type stuff and all that. So. But you can see where it goes, and I think that's pretty much it for this video anyways. You'll be able to go through and have some fun and extrapolate little details here or there that, you know, maybe you wanted and uh, they almost got lost or whatever. It's it's not gone yet. That's why I do it with transparent layers. I prefer this over um, not using them. You can see, like, maybe I want a little cut down here, a little undercut. Still do that. And add all kinds of little things in here that I want. This is still just a loose sketch, right? We're not we're not finalized by any means, but it's gonna get you a lot quick. It's gonna get you where you want to go a lot quicker, in my opinion, than um, you can probably imagine. You could do this for everything, not just alien stuff. You can do this for buildings. You can do this for like we did the desk and the little wall, right? You can do this for whole buildings and cities and all kinds of stuff. Everything that you can draw, you can do this with it, right? It's super fun. So now I'm just going to work out what I want out of this thing. And you can see, I sometimes you might not have the um, exactly what you want. Like maybe right here, I want this to be centered somewhere right here. Uh, if I center it, I don't have the other side coming down. And on top of that, this is actually doing something a little bit different than what this side is doing. So I might have to go through and like re-line these things up, basically. So you're still going to have some work to do at this point. It's not going to be all automatic. Um, but if, if you had done everything with the idea or intention of this anyways, of doing this from the start, you know, a lot of this would already be shaded and may even be full rendered. That's the thing. It may even be full renderings. So you're not going to have to go through and do what I'm doing now. And that's the best part about it, right? Get work done quicker. Have more fun with it. Not think about it so much. And personally, I just enjoy this part of it because it's like nothing's set in stone yet. It's just a lot of fun to look at. And uh, imagine what it could be, you know, kind of just tracing, tracing the interests that I like, you know. Oops, I keep color sampling by accident. So I can do little things like this. I could, I could come through here and cross hatch even and add some more shading on top of it that's more sketchy like. So we'll just work on this a little bit longer and we'll end the video. But at this point, you could run with this. You can go head off into your favorite program, Photoshop, Krita, Affinity Photo, whatever. There's all kinds of different drawing and 2D art programs these days. I still think Photoshop is going to be your best option. So if you've never had Photoshop, do consider getting it and learning it. It's very powerful in a lot of ways, especially for digital art and uh, like photo bashing and stuff. But um. You certainly can use other free alternatives like Krita, right? Krita is also very good for digital art, just so you know. It's not like, um, it's not so good for photo bashing. It gets a little bit slow with some like heavier image resolutions and stuff like that. But for concepting, like basic, coming up with like really simple ideas of shapes and designs, for sketches anyways, and like traditional art stuff, it's not really bad at all. And you can create paradoxes, just a heads up. Uh, 
if you create paradoxes, you'll have a hard time 3D modeling them. I'll tell you that right now. It could happen, but um, you can find ways to fix it. Just as long as you like keep the idea or you keep like your fundamentals in in mind, like you know perspective drawing type stuff, isometric drawing. You shouldn't have too many um, paradoxes. It could still happen. It happens to me regularly, but I'll have to play with it and get um just get better at it, I guess, to avoid those situations. I don't do it too often, but it still happens. There's probably something like that going to happen down here because it's getting a little a little unruly, but you can always fix them later if needed. Hopefully. Some of them are harder to fix than others. All right. So anyways, that's it for this video, guys. Could do this all day long and finish sketching this thing, but I think you get the idea. It's a lot of fun, right? Anyways, I'll check you guys out in the next one. Until then, take care.